Amy and Cooney are in a dressing room. What has been your most embarrassing on stage moment? Cooney laughs and puts his head in his hand. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I, I'll sorry. tell you what mine is. I'll I, t- I know I exactly what mine is. <laughs> what do you think it is? Is it you cycling? Doing the okay, there's two then. <laughs> So the two, both on Hamlet. One of them, I don't know if I've told you this one, um, was that in the start, at the start of Hamlet, obviously you've got me playing Horatio, this one we're on tour, me playing Horatio, um, and then we've got Marcellus and Bernardo, right? And they're kind of either side of me at the end of the first scene, and I'm saying, well, go and speak to Hamlet, because he needs to know about the ghost of his dead father, yeah. and we'll see what happens after that. And I, for whatever reason, was like, <laughs> flinging around with my arms and kind of poked one of them in the eye and as I did it went sorry mate and realised at the top of the show yeah and like very full voice didn't kind of go like full voice said sorry mate that's really sweet though I hurt him and I realised oh I should say sorry and he's my mate sorry mate and then the other one again in Hamlet was for whatever reason, I had to, usually it was someone else, I think there was an understudy situation, so I had to, which I hadn't realised until the day, that I had to cycle the tricycle <laughs> on stage and then off stage again. <laughs> and as I went to take it off stage, I clearly didn't quite take it wide enough, so that one of the wheels was just banging against <laughs> the the flat on the side so I couldn't get it off so I then had to come out and kind of shift the back of it. Papa clearly like your acting man that's what kept people engrossed during was that Was he moment. in the middle of a monologue then? I think he yeah I think so. Probably when he's about to say now I am alone or something like that. Oh man. Yeah. But You're such a good driver aren't thanks, you? Thanks mate. Thank you. I've had lots of embarrassing moments but one happened last week and you were there. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgot how to pronounce a word halfway through saying it. What was the word? <laughs> it's meant. Oh God. Countenance. Countenance. So it's meant to be a gate and countenance, surely, like a mother. And I just went a gate and count. Schla. <laughs> <laughs> and all uh, I could see was Laura Ellsworthy going, "Oh, that's an interesting choice." Yeah, yeah, Emily yeah. being like, "Oh," and you just like. Amy bobs her shoulders up and laughing. down. Laughing. <laughs> Oh, oh was, I'm terrible. Very I'm terrible. embarrassing. Bad corpse there. What's the hardest job to do in the theatre? Stage management are always here before and after us. Unlike actors who get, you would hope, like an applause every night where you go, oh, we did a good job. Like, <laughs> yeah. a lot of crew don't get that luxury every single day, every single night. So yeah. be nice to stage crew people. Be so nice. And all stage management, because their job is much harder than acting. Yeah. Do you have any traditions or superstitions for the shows? On measure now, I don't know if you've noticed, me and David always cross at the back, just because his dressing room's on one side, mine's on the other side, and we cross at the back, and we always do our little... He waves his hands around. High five. Me and you have a little high five. They do a fancy rehearsed high five. Yeah. I have one for Shrew. I have to do a turn in my wheelchair, because I start in my movement dance chair, and I have to do a turn, and now Hannah's popped onto it, and before we go on, she's like, Amy, have you done your turn? How important is it to go to drama college? I think you should go to drama school or drama college because you want to go to drama school or drama college. It shouldn't be that you think that that's the only way you can become an actor because you don't have to. I think that you can learn a lot. And I think that's that was why I wanted to go is that I wanted to spend three years learning about acting and theatre and everything to do with the industry. But there are plenty of people who work in our industry who didn't have that traditional conservatoire training or whatever and um, and they do brilliantly well and they learn on the job because ultimately that is I think one of the biggest learning grounds is actually having doing Just the job doing it popcorn or cookies for a movie night <laughs> popcorn cookies or I get popcorn you get cookies and you crumble the cookies in the that's popcorn. nice you know what I've also found what popcorn M&Ms yeah I know <laughs> Can you didn't just discover that that's a thing can you cut the bra out? No. Does the RSC expect its audience to know the play before they watch it? I think that probably people, a lot of people will know the story before they can watch it. Especially but in Stratford. I would, yeah. But I would hope, and I think most of the directors, if not all the directors that I've worked with here, have always been working on the idea that, that the audience don't know the play. I remember I didn't see a Shakespeare until 
Yeah, I reckon I was 16. I think I was the same. Yeah. I think when I was doing GCSE drama. How do you pick yourself up after a performance when it doesn't go your way? So I come to your dressing room <laughs> and Lucy Phelps and Sophie Can't Levy um, complain about how bad I was, eat chocolates, and then eventually you'll stroke my ego enough to go <laughs> and leave the room. But it's so frustrating because like <laughs> I listen to your scenes every day and like originally I didn't even listen to them and then when you started doing that I was like, oh I'll tune in. And, uh, <laughs> I'll see if he's that bad. <laughs> and it's always great so... I, Thanks yeah. man. You're always your own worst critic, I guess. You are. Well, I am. Yeah, no we all are. Yeah, yeah. 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 I also just try to think that there are bigger things in the world yeah. and we're all human. If people wanted to go and see a perfect performance um, that was, you know, exactly the same as the night before, then they can go to the cinema. Where have you trained? I trained at Mount View Academy of Theatre Arts. I did the three-year course in musical theatre. I trained at the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts, aka Lippa, which was a three-year BA acting course. Mm -hmm. Genuinely one of the best times of my life. Paul McCartney gave me my, uh, my diploma at the end. Got to shake Paul McCartney's hand. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's pretty cool. What course is best to apply to for drama school? Musical theatre or acting? That's like so individual. Part of me that sometimes wishes I'd done musical theatre, actually because I think it gives you more skills and a yeah. bigger skill set. Like for example, I would love to be in Hamilton, but I'm no, I'm not going to be one of the dancers in that. You're quite a good dancer, though. Wow, thanks, Amy Trigg. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'm never going to be. <laughs> Another example of me having to stroke your ego and be like, you'll be ready for the stage soon. <laughs> if you are studying acting, I think you can get, you get so deep into that, that I kind of love that. Which maybe isn't when you're doing musical theatre, you just don't have the time because you're trying to spread it across three, if not more disciplines. Yeah, because I had um, the opposite and I felt exactly that way. Yeah. I saw the acting course going really in depth with like Chekhov and stuff. I was like, oh man, I feel like I'm missing out a little bit. But I really enjoyed my course. Yeah. I wouldn't change it. So yeah, it's up to the individual. Any audition advice? Three bits of audition advice. Three bits of audition advice. Go. I was going to say learn your lines. But sometimes, some people don't want you to learn the lines. No. But I would say, like, really make some choices, I guess. Familiarise yourself Familiarize and make Familiarise yourself and make choices with them. Like I said before, remember that the casting directors or casting team of director want you to be really good and to solve their problem. Mm -hmm. um, and the third thing is to be able to come in, do the job in the room and then let, completely let it go. I would also throw in that treat auditions like performances because you don't get that many opportunities to perform sometimes if yeah. you're auditioning. Um, so I like to do that and I feel that helps with my... Um, I don't like saying nerves. It's an excitement as well. Excitement. Though. It helps you manage your excitement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is the practical joker of the company and what was the last prank they pulled? Who would you say? You, Leo and Mick are messing me up. Ah. <laughs> so uh, in the final scene, yeah, yeah. I come off stage. Don't tell people. Like, okay. You can't because what if the company find out? <laughs> you get in trouble. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Basically. Cooney, Leo and Mick are being very naughty. Mick can be a bit of a joker. Mick, yeah. Mick. To be fair, you are as well, in the wings. <laughs> What's the most important thing to understand about Shrew? I'm performing it next year. That's from Natalie. It's so difficult to boil it down to one thing. And I, th I think that the idea of trying to like make, for example, a perfect performance or trying yeah. to solve Shrew or trying to give one answer is like a bit of a wild goose chase. So I'd kind of discourage anyone away from doing that. I think it is about, as Claire I think has said, two quite unconventional odd people mm. um, falling in love. You took the words right out of my mouth, don't try and solve it. I didn't have a shave. Amy looks at Cooney's stubble. You're going to have to before the show aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Cut to black to be continued.